Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back, King of the Games. Once again, we are celebrating Halloween with a playthrough of Adam Wake. We're picking up right where we left off with this. I'm assuming it's going to be some sort of like physics puzzle. Now, unfortunately, I have completely forgotten what's happened uh, previously. Pretty sure I had something to do with shadow monsters. Expected to get ambushed by enemies before now. You know how survival horrors are. The moment you get into a lift, you will be attacked. Maybe I've just played too much Dead Space. Okay, I was expecting to climb that. <laughs> Instead, I just kicked it. So shiny. Oh, it's just a light. Oh. Noises. Noises are happening. And kick. Where kicking is the only way Alan knows how to fix anything. Should we have a look see if he was up first? Probably a manuscript page. Ooh, I see flares. Give me those flares. Script page. Lightning flashed behind the windows of Cauldron Lake Lodge. Tor Anderson laughed and held the steel hammer above his head. Nurse Sinclair was trying to calm him down without success. Tor grinned madly and shouted, My hammer's up. Here's a friendly poke from Molnir, wench. He brought the hammer down with all his might on Sinclair's head. We're on a comeback tour, baby. What of you? Player light.
Oh, great. Another cable car. Just great. Well, they give me flare guns and flares for this cable car, right? So I'm expecting birds. Yep, I hear them. But these flares don't last as long as they used to. Oh. Oh, that's not good. Oh, we nearly made it. Things could have gone a lot worse, if we're being honest. Is there another guy running down here? Oh, yeah. Flashbangs. Wow, Shit. that's not good. <laughs> so, I'm strong enough to throw that, <laughs> probably not going to win the fight. He lies down there. Oh yes, hunting rifle. Pick up that hunting rifle. Yes, I believe I did. Ha <laughs> ha ha! Ooh, we have more of them. Come on, fellas. Everybody get in the line. In the rules. Well, got two of them.
crap, I forgot to reload. I do like this hunting rifle, to be fair. Lake. Talk about sort of as a rock this bridge. See if we can swing it a bit. I'll take away my sprint. You mind? How many axes do you possibly have to throw? an ammo which I have no doubt will come in handy although I have learnt my lessons somewhat and I will try and use them before they take my guns away from me again Maud had checked all of Stucky's rental cabins there had been no sign of the wakes it was dark when he'd found their car parked at the end of the road by Cauldron Lake it made no sense they must have taken a wrong turn but there was no sign of them, and the car had been there for hours already. Frustrated, Mott stood on the rotten ruin of the footbridge that had once led to Diver's Isle before it sank beneath the waves years ago. The boss wouldn't be happy. I think that's the first time I've seen a prompt for anything that isn't kick. Why well, you can climb that? Oh, no, we're back to kick. Never ask, I don't wait to fix anything. Now, presumably, we're going in there. Probably have to go through the house and then come back. This is the way around that side. Hmm. Looks like there should be a door there. Oh well, into the basement we go. 
Yeah, you can just open a door, right? Oh dear, that's... Yep, okay, so that's, uh, that's pretty creepy. Pick it up. I mean, I have the shotgun at this precise moment, but I'm sure that time will come again. Wow. Oh, come on, fellas. Let's talk about this. Wasting a flare on just one guy. Don't mind if I do. Yeah, that's reloaded. That's reloaded. Sweet. that thermos. I could see Cauldron Lake. I thought I could make out the spot where the island and the cabin had been. There was a light near it. It had to be a boat. I was close now. I had to get there fast. I dreaded what I would find. Yeah, it's not gonna be anything good. I tried to hold on to Alice, but her form melted away. I was losing control. Dr. Hartman stood in her place. I wanted to hit him, but my arms were jelly. He smiled. It was a reassuring smile, and I hated him for it. I had to give you a sedative. Don't fight it. You went through another rough period. Right now, it's very important that you stay calm. We don't want you to have another episode. You're a patient at my clinic. Have been for a while now. Damn you, Hartman.
Wow, that's quite a fall. That's gonna hurt. Appears to be the end of another episode. Previously on Alan Wake, I'm hunted by the law. Sheriff, Wake's running. I'm giving chase. Are you seriously telling me that? Yeah, we don't need it previously. Shh, baby, it was just a nightmare. Alice. Hartman, I fell. I had to give you a set. Don't fight it. I... You went through another rough period. What? Right now, it's very important that you stay calm. We don't want you to have another episode. You're a patient at my clinic. Have been for a while now. The shock of your wife's death triggered a mental illness. No, you're... you lie. You're suffering from various Bastard. symptoms of undifferentiated schizophrenia. Bastard. It's okay, okay Alan. Just, Just let go. 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 I felt groggy. Whatever Hartman had bumped in me was making me numb. I felt like this was happening to someone else. Someone I was watching on television. I couldn't think. Couldn't focus. The door was locked. I was a prisoner here. Hey, at least we got a typewriter. Be back on Cauldron Lake. Here, yeah, footsteps. Good evening, Alan. Are we feeling better now? Feeling calm? Punch him. Yeah. I see you brought your pet gorilla with you. So sure, I'm calm. I get the message. Loud and clear. Quite right. That's the spirit? You're being very brave, Alan. I understand you're confused. I would be more concerned if you weren't suspicious of me. I don't blame you for it. Big Where's the button to punch him? Now, why don't you come with me? We'll reacquaint you with my clinic and go over everything you might have forgotten. Little walk and some fresh air? Yes, it will do you good. This corridor is for patients. Most of them aren't here right now. Jack took them out for a fishing trip. Except for the ones who are particularly vulnerable, of course. I encourage creativity as a part of the recovery process here at Cauldron Lake Lodge. I specialize in treating artists. I bet you do. Splendid, Alan. I honestly believe we can get this thing under control if we work together. This way, Alan. Just need to play along till we get outside. Now, Alan, from past experience with you, I know I need to get right into the heart of the matter as quickly as I can after an episode. So I'm just going to say this. Alice is dead. No. You're in a very vulnerable state until you understand and accept this. Alice drowned, and you couldn't face that. You're suffering from hallucinations, paranoid delusions, unusual thinking, an obsession about light and darkness, a feeling that everything revolves around you, your thoughts and dreams. Your mind has constructed an elaborate fantasy scenario in which your writings are affecting reality. She has been kidnapped, and supernatural forces of darkness are trying to stop you. We go this way, Alan. I wasn't ready for another shot, so I went along with it. He had to be lying. But under the influence of the drug he had given me, I had to fight not to believe his words. It's all in your head. You've been making it up. 
Apart from the tragic accident with your wife, no one has been killed. Your delusions are just a manifestation of your subconscious mind trying to protect you from the too painful truth. Unless we fight the fantasy, it will return. I know the instinct is to resist me, but think about it. Doesn't this make far more sense than the insane supernatural conspiracy you have concocted in your mind? You're a skeptic by nature, Alan. We both know this. Everything can be explained logically. What's up with that giant sundial? I mean, that was an accident waiting to happen. I mean, someone's got to get killed on that at some point. <coughs> Isn't it? Cauldron Lake spread below us. I could see Mira Peak on the other side of the lake. I thought I could make out the spot where Diver's Isle had been when I arrived with Alice. Now there was nothing but waves. There's a storm a coming. There's a storm coming. Funny, I don't recall there being a mention of that in the weather forecast. Well, no matter. This way, follow me. Alan, what I'm telling you is good news. Right now, we're in control. Every time you have a relapse, it gets more and more difficult to resurface from the dark depths of your imagination. Not surprising, considering your profession. Imagination is what you work with. After all your nightmares, this should come as an immense relief to you. If it doesn't, why is that? Because I'm lying? Or because you don't want to admit that you're not well? It's very natural for you to think of me as your enemy. It's part of the illness. I let him talk. All, Hartman I'm obviously loved his own voice. His words echoed madly inside my head. But I, I dug my nails into the palms myself. of my hands to stay focused. You need to work with me. Once you accept that, we can begin the journey towards your recovery. Come along. Let's go inside. Here's the entrance to the office wing. That's for staff only. You were impressed by my trophies when you first arrived here. I do love to hunt. The great outdoors, man versus nature. It's wonderful stuff. Pretty damn wonderful, yeah. Scary, scary, scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never seen the peel to kind of hunting trophies and taxidermy. A real bad dream, mister. You should be afraid of me. Don't want to run into me in the night, that's for sure. Please, Emerson. Mr. Wake is confused enough as it is. Yeah, you'd like me to go away so you won't be scared. But you can't just decide what kind of dream you have or when you have it. Emerson. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Boo. That's Emerson. We're actually making some progress with him, I'm happy to say. He works on video games. It's trash, of course, but it does involve some small creative effort, which makes him receptive to my therapeutic methods. No kidding. might have noticed the typewriter in your room. You've been writing as a part of the therapy. As soon as you feel up to it, you should continue. Is killing me. There's a storm coming. Oh, what a storm! I hope it wipes this place off the face of the earth. And these two are the Anderson brothers, Odin and Tor. They had a how should I put this? A heavy metal band in the 70s and 80s called Old Gods of Asgard. They even adopted new first names to complete the image of Viking gods. 
After the band broke up, they lived on a farm nearby. They are, well, in advanced stages of dementia. They are well cared for, TLC and all that. There's nothing more that can be done. I'm afraid that the rock and roll lifestyle has left its mark. No, that won't do. I'm so sorry to cut this short. For now, Alan, the power has been acting up. I'd better go check on it. We'll continue this soon. Meanwhile, when you feel up to it, return to your room and try to write. It really is for the best. Don't you think? I'd like to bash his head in with a hammer. Oh, he'd love to fish out our secrets, but he has no clue. He's not crazy enough. <laughs> not crazy like us, Sonny. Yeah. Being ah. crazy is a requirement, Sonny. Who else could understand the world when it's like this? It takes crazy to know crazy. That's the sanest thing I've heard in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Say, you're all right, Tom. Hey, we like him, don't we, bro? He's got to go to the farm. The Anderson Farm. Valhalla! I like these guys. Less for you to forget. A crash course. All you need to know to get your head right. You need to find the message. Here, Sonny, here's something for you. Gave me a rash, but I kept it safe from these bastards. Zane could feel the poems, taking form, shaping things. As he experimented, he imagined he could almost feel the power surging through the keys of the typewriter. It exhilarated him. But there was fear, too. If not for his young assistant, Emil, he would have given it up. But Emil convinced him otherwise. He, too, had a way with words. My head was clearing up, or according to Hartman, I was sinking back into the fantasy. I was convinced he was lying to me about everything. Crazy or not, the Andersons made more sense. Tom, got any I love the uh, Night Springs yeah, board uh, game. No. <laughs> we Sorry, have guys. a stash of the special stuff at the farm. Our own formula. Local ingredients. Medicine clears your head right up. Makes you remember like moonbeams on the brain. Oh, I just noticed leather patches on the elbows. That's not very rock and roll. Tom just lost is all. Baba Yaga got to him too, the damn witch. She used us all, taken from all of us. Took my thunder, the witch. And my ravens, what was it? What were they? <laughs> Memory and thought, the hag. She took something from you too, didn't she? That's what she does. Um, we're better off. This place, the lake, it gives you power. If you're a creator, an artist, a god. I miss shifted in their sleep in the darkness of the lake. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. She makes sure it comes out twisted and wrong. Just ask the lamp lady. She knows what happened to that other rider. She's been using you, boy. And you let her. You went and opened the door for her, didn't you? Now, now, it was already open a crack. And whose fault is that? We're morally corrupt, disease-ridden, old and stupid. Doesn't mean he had to open it all the way, goddammit. Ah, uh, for... So well. tired. Built the farm close to the lake. A place of power. It's been fun, lads. Party there, man. You, you should go there and have a party. Oop, everything's locked. Do that, Birch. Hey, Wake. 
Why don't you humor Dr. Hartman and give the writing a shot, huh? Typewriter's in your room. You can get to your room by those stairs, Wake. Something's wrong. I'm not myself. It's hard to think that there's a shadow inside my head. I can only focus on writing. Everything else is a blur. I'm trapped in this cabin. Have been for days, but it's always dark outside. My editor is real. I saw her again. She's not human. It's not human. A dark presence is wearing the old woman's face. She was covered in clinging shadows. There's a hole in her chest where her heart should be. I think I've made a horrible mistake. I don't think I'm any closer to saving Alice. It's been lying to me, using me to get the story it wants, and the story will come true. Hartman had mentioned that the power had been acting up. Maybe that was the reason for the generator and the work light on the balcony. The generator hadn't been activated, and there was no key. Hartman wanted me to write. I knew I couldn't, but I figured I should just play along for now. It was the only thing I could do with Nurse Birch watching me like a hawk. I suppose the one's going to hit with a hammer from Thor, right? My hands began to shake uncontrollably. Hey, Wake, you stay here. I'm going to go see what's up. You just keep doing what you're doing. Be cool, okay? Chaos was all about, but it could be my only chance of getting out of here. Hartman kept talking, giving Barry the grand tour, clearly proud of the place. He went on and on about his hunting trophies, and Barry was impressed. But he was here on business. He raised his voice, cut through the monologue. Hey, Hartman, where's Al? Hartman stopped in mid-sentence, annoyed at the interruption. He nodded at the hulking orderly standing nearby. The man smiled and clapped a practiced hand on Barry's shoulder. It's my store. <laughs> I'm taking it. Sinclair looked bad. That wasn't a love tap. The crazy old fart hit her hard. If she was one of Hartman's goons, she had it coming. I could get the key to the office wing from Sinclair. Come out and face the music, Birch! It's I had to get to Hartman's office. He had taken all my manuscript pages. That's where he'd been keeping Maybe them. Maybe you could come out and beat our wrinkled adult diapered asses. Since you're so tough, Birch. We were on the road, man. You think we haven't seen pups like you before? The poor old name. Let me out of here! Hartman, do you hear me? The markings on the tape said they were recordings Hartman had made at the sessions with his patients. I saw Alice's name on one of them. For a moment, I couldn't breathe right. Hartman wasn't happy. Mott could see it in his eyes. He quickly lowered his own. He had made a mess of it, and he knew it. The shame of failure was hard to bear. He hadn't expected Wake to say he needed more time. And he blurted out two days, less than Wake had asked for to show him who was in charge. But that wasn't part of Hartman's plan. Mrs. Wake, can you tell me about Alan's problems? He's more and more out of control all the time. The parties, he's so angry all the time. He's getting violent, he's... Do you mean with you? No, not with me. No, never. I... Sometimes I almost wish Alan would take a swing at me.
indeed listen. I don't know. I want to say, I look at you, and it's not you. Just some stranger who resembles you, looking out from behind your eyes. And I don't like that guy much. And now it's all gonna go to hell. But you don't ever say this. No. Just get him here, I'll absolutely do my very best. Yeah, but Doctor, you need to be careful with him. He's not just going to listen to you and cooperate. He's the most stubborn man I've ever met. Well, I'll be sure to bear that in mind. Hearing her voice, what she was saying made me happy and sick and guilty all at once. Worst of all, I recognized the words. The phone call from her. It had been a cut-up of this. Just a recording. The photo on the wall caught my attention. In it, the clinic staff was standing outside the lodge. I knew the man next to Hartman. He was the kidnapper. Hartman had been playing me all along. Barry? Ow! About time! Barry, man, am I glad to see you. We need to get to Hartman's office. It's right next door. You okay? Oi, we hide behind the cutout of me. The cops found me a Rose's trailer, but they didn't hassle me too much. I'm obviously a victim in this, and I demanded to be treated as such, or else I'd sue their asses. Speaking of asses, that fed gave me a real hard time, but I had no clue where you were. That guy's crazy, Al. But he let me go, and then I get a call from Hartman, that son of a bitch, who tells me you're here, and I should come pick you up. But when I got here, two goons clobbered me and stuck me in there. What's... what's with the cutout? I stole it from the diner to piss off Rose after what she did to us. That'll teach her. Yeah, that's a harsh punishment. Come on, pal, we gotta get going. Let's get those manuscript pages. And a gun. Oh, I've lost all my guns again, haven't I? All the pages I had on and more. Alan, please. You're sliding back Shh, into the... Tell me one more lie and I'll shoot you in the face. Ah, well, it was worth a shot. Really, Wake, come on. Let's work together on this. You have no idea. Hartman, shut up. Barry, get out of here. I'll catch up with you. Get a car. Oh, Al, let's just go. Wake, listen to me. This is a mistake. Don't you see? Together we can create something absolutely wonderful with your ability and mine. Should have left me have the chance. Jack to take the boat to him. The spot was easy to see in the dark, even with all the extra lights in the boat. The flare floated and kept burning even in the water. Jack turned the radio louder as the engine sputtered. The music was rough and clanking, something the Anderson brothers would no doubt have enjoyed. But Hartman chose to ignore it. Wake was finally within his reach. I had to find a way out. Oh, oh, no, don't have a torch. Yeah, let's not go in there. Okay. 
guys, you sit in here. I needed light to get the possessed bookshelves out of my way. He had no ambitions on that front, and he certainly didn't want to end up like every artist he had worked with here, damaged in ways that were hard to describe, or worse. It was enough for Hartman to maintain creative control and provide direction, to be a producer. That was what most of these people were in need of anyway. Of course, suitable subjects were few and far in between. That's not good. Let me out. for exploring. Can't believe they took my guns again. I found the car, but the gate's locked. You're gonna have to go through the hedge maze over there. Barry, I don't have a light. Take this, Al. Sweet. Cheers, Barry. Oh, oh dear. stared at the biking paraphernalia that littered the area, surrounding an unlikely centerpiece. A 
full-size stage complete with an impressive sound system with all the trimmings, including a dragon. It took a special kind of crazy to build something like this in a remote field. When the sky split open with a deafening boom and the music started blasting, it felt strangely appropriate. Yes, we're going to a metal concert. It's all I've ever asked for. Oh dear. Well, I missed time that. Yes, give me that flag on. Amat knew that Wake was smarter than him. Wake had more money, a beautiful wife, everything. And Hartman said Wake was important. That made him better than Mott. But Mott was calling the shots now. He'd expected Wake to whimper and grovel, but instead, he seemed willing to fight. Mott knew he'd gotten under Wake's skin. If only Mott actually had his wife. The thought made him shiver. I keep forgetting what gun I've got equipped.
the moment, Barry was just glad he had survived the fall. He had been separated from Al, and there was no easy way to climb back up. He told himself he'd be okay, okay in the gloomy forest at night. He would just have to wait for a while for Al to find his way down. Barry turned when he heard the heavy footsteps and saw the movement. The man-shaped shadow lunged at him from the bushes, an axe held high. Barry screamed and threw up his hand. The world exploded. Neil made Tom do it. Supplies. We're at that time again, folks. Just about to leave this place. And so we should call the episode there. Thank you so much for joining me. Please do like and subscribe. And come back for the next episode. We'll continue our journey on Alan Wake. See you then.